Hi guys, welcome back to Paper Confessions. I'm Kara Mia. Join me today as we explore the world of vintage paper ephemera. I'll show you what they are, what they look like, where you can get them, why we collect them, and how you can use them in your junk journals. Before we dive in, let's define the word ephemera. It basically means these are objects designed to be used for a short time, and most of them are documents of everyday life. They come in a variety of items. Some examples are postcards, luggage tags, tickets, old letters, calendars, magazines, guest checks, and more. So here's a little stash that I'll be showing you today. These are some smaller paper ephemera. We are going to go through this and show you what they are. You probably might even have them at home. So for starters, we have these adorable playing cards they come in different varieties of designs and colors, and I love them. They are fun to use in our journals. Let me pull out some more fun ephemera. Now, when it comes to sewing notions, we have some seam binding, packaging. You can definitely use that as well. Then we have these wax um, paper envelopes. They also have beautiful topography on them that creates wonderful interest on your junk journals. We have some stamps. And then our next item here, this seems to be a little state bank check. And we have an old receipt. This is the back of the receipt. So there's some interesting items to look for like dates, location. Here is an old ad. And here is the front of that ad. And then this is a little booklet, and I think this is for a bridge game, if I'm not mistaken. But how cute is this little booklet? You can use the sheets of paper for writing or jotting down your notes, listing, or putting important dates. We also have this beautiful ephemera from a button pack. Now you probably remember the Viewmaster Reels, and this is one that shows the seven wonders of the world. And again, they also offer these in travel. They offer these for little kids with different images for stories. And we have a vintage little invitation card with our vinyl record. These are fun to use as well as little journaling cards. And then we have the receipts. This is a copy of one that came from a tobacco company. And this is a photograph from 1960s and pictures are definitely a popular ephemera nowadays in the junk journaling world. Aside from vintage photographs, I wanted to go ahead and share these beautiful cabinet cards. These are antique and studio photographs that were gifted to me by Dale from Not Too Shabby Chic. These make beautiful images that you can put in front of your journal cover. Another popular paper ephemera are music sheets. Here are some examples that I have in my personal collections, and some of these date back to the 1920s. Another item that you can add and use, I love maps, and here are some that I found in my National Geographic magazines. Now, if you're looking for these, you can definitely buy them in a used bookstore. I got mine for free at my local library, so make sure to check out your local library and see if they have them. We have flashcards. We have some of these tearaway sheets from board games, leftover grid paper and ledgers. We also have a tally card and even a time card. Magazines are also a great resource for inspiration, finding some wonderful images. And for me personally, I love looking back at these magazines, reading the articles, looking at the ads, and seeing what life was like in that particular era. It is a wonderful way to kind of look back at a piece of history and also from a design point of view, I like to see the way they mix their colors, how they create their page layouts and even designs. So I think this is a great way to learn. 
when you are doing print design or just making your page layouts in your journal. So here are some fun ads and here are some cute little lunch boxes. I really love the colors on that. Now this one shows a little bit of a lifestyle page layout. We have some desserts and I like that this one has a cute little booklet. It's a tearaway booklet with recipes that you can use at home. So I think that is super cute and you can see the color palette is quite different from the ones we see nowadays. We also have some black and white pages here and I think it's really fun seeing also how they advertise their beauty products back in the day. Now here are also some home and some fashion images. I think some of these uh, magazines were from the 50s and 60s. So I think it's really interesting to see the articles and just learn more about um, how we thought back then or how they thought back then and what were the similarities today i think that's really interesting as well so in terms of using this in your junk journal you can definitely use the pages as actual pages that you can collage on and journal on they're snoopy <laughs> and um, here are some examples of paper ephemera for a little tearaway ad now speaking of tearaway ads, here are some for Walt Disney books. I remember seeing that when I was growing up, when we would order an encyclopedia sets, and then we have this cute little activity paper sheet, a cute advertisement with some outfits for kids. And then let me show you one. This is a, a little work basket, little booklet. And again, really fun images here. Now this one was from the 90s. Now we have our uh, manuals and these are fine resources as well. I love seeing this and seeing how they've written it. Look at the colors here. They are so much fun. So these make great ephemera and they make great pages for your junk journal. I have another one here and this time it shows you a manual on how to use your mix master from sunbeam isn't that cool and here's the calendar it tells you what year it is i think it's amazing how they mix black and white and then you have a pop of color here and there super cool i hope you guys are enjoying seeing the different kinds of ephemera a lot of them probably are just right in your home. So one that I really like is the Brady Crocker Easy Entertaining. Now this one I got from my local thrift shop in Savers for $2.49. And again, I just love the illustrations. And these are fun pages that you can add maybe to a vintage theme journal. And our homemaker's journal. Here's one that... I really like as well. This is by Good Housekeeping. And the illustrations are just adorable. I love the colors. This I think is from the 60s and 70s. Really cute. Some of the recipes are quite interesting and really different from the recipes that we see nowadays. Now I have one more recipe book for you and it's all about dessert and cakes. Now I think this one was from the late 60s or early 1970s. This would make perfect paper ephemera and pages. Look at this, it's so cute for a vintage theme cookbook junk journal. So the possibilities are endless. Now in this video, I'm just showing you a number of items that you can use when it comes to paper ephemera like this big stash here can be used as pages. You can use this bingo card as a floating journal card. This time card can be a trifold, make it into a folio. We have the index cards from the library that you can use as pockets. And here are some grid paper for writing. And then these large pages, you can make envelopes. You can use them as background pieces in your master board or on your pages when you do your collaging. Here's an envelope that you can use as a pocket or a flip. 
And then another vintage or antique book page here that would probably be perfect for a fashion themed junk journal. Another theme that I like are travel journals and maps are perfect for that but these are so versatile you don't really have to just use them for travel type journals because of the colors you can use them in different uh, themes we have some leftover stationery some architectural pages here and i love the black and white and of course our favorite the music sheets more of our maps that i showed you earlier i had also posted a tutorial on how to make a map journal so if you want to see that i'll post it a link up above here now this world atlas was gifted to me by my friend joanne who purchased it from their local library sale now let me show you my personal collection of some vintage greeting cards and that is another type of ephemera that we get throughout our days that sometimes people will just throw away but look at this gorgeous bundle here i was lucky enough to be able to go to an antique mall about an hour and a half away from where we live and bought this for a really good price it was in a ziploc bag tucked away in their shelf i was so happy to find these these are perfect for journaling cards i love some of the interactive ones here's a funny one here look at that isn't that fun and then they have some humorous cards here for Valentine's. And so I really like that. Here's another interactive one. It has a little pop-up. And this one here is my favorite. It's a Mother's Day themed. And I like that it's a little book. It looks like a little book with beautiful illustrations. So this one's definitely a keeper. Now for the rest of the cards, you can definitely use the covers cut them apart and use them as floating journal cards. You can use them as additional pages. Some of the cards that came in this bundle were kind of worn out or torn up. So what I did was I saved the images and fuzzy cut them. The ones I'm showing you right now are the best ones or were in better condition. And again, it's just so fun to see how they made their cards. So here it is, guys. Look at how much I was able to get these are going to look good in our spring journals, Valentine's, Easter journals. How cute are those? So that's what you can use that for. But we will be kind of going into that a little bit more in a future in a future video. Let me show you some postcards. These are, again, ephemera that you might already have. Some old letters. Look at that embossed stamp on top. And this is what we like to see that... A lot of junk journalists uh, do replicate as the coffee dyed look with the aging there. Now this next bundle is so special. It came and was given to me from uh, Dale from Not Too Shabby Chic from a recent swap. Now I believe Dale had found these letters uh, in a marketplace and the lady was giving them all for free. So what an amazing find. So you can definitely check out some Facebook marketplaces and other um, resources that you might have online. So today, like promise, I am going to read one of these letters to you Monday afternoon at home. Dear Christine, well, here I am trying to write to you when I don't know a thing that would interest you, but I have waited so long to answer your letter that I feel badly about it. I do not see how you ever find time to do anything working and studying too. It would take all the time to keep my subjects up without working, but everyone isn't so dumb as I. It does not look now like I'm going to be able to come to school next term. I hope that I'm not going to be disappointed again. If I am to think, I think I shall try some other line of work. Nursing, probably. Both of my chums are going up there next term. They are Virginia, Abercrombie, and Laurel Brown. Do you see Kristen Grable and Virginia Rowland? They are both going to be you. Did you have a nice Christmas? I surely did. My boyfriend gave me a watch and fitted case. Mother and dad gave me a dress hose and things like that. I got several other nice small presents. I know of nothing I would enjoy better than spending a weekend with you, but I just do not see how I could get away. Anyway, maybe I will see you lots after February. I would like for you to come down to see me some weekend, if you could. 
I must close now as I have several more letters to write. Oh yeah, Elnora has, was here a few minutes ago and she said, tell all of you hello for her. Please answer me soon, love, Marie. What a super sweet and endearing letter. Oh, I love that. I love reading old letters. I have letters from my grandma that I love to read or from my mom. And these make wonderful pieces for story journals that I have also made. But now I'm going to show you some other pieces here. These are calendars and autograph books. And they come in different sizes. So here are some that I have in my personal collection. I really love this one because the messages were really well written. They had some illustrations and some of the messages were really profound. They weren't just like, you know, have a great summer or see you next time. They were, they had some substance and you can see the penmanship is beautiful. I'm really happy to see that uh, a lot of kids are uh, taking interest in kind of reviving that art, you know, of writing and also, you know, learning how to draw and and create beautiful calligraphy pieces like this one. And I thought this was such a beautiful piece of memorabilia. Here's one that was funny. It had a little scribble or doodle of her friend uh, teasing her. And I'm going to pull in the camera to show you how he signed it. It says, Goody the Public Nuisance. I thought that was funny. Now look at this tiny calendar. And I imagine these were given probably for free as a promotional piece. It can hold stamps and it looks like uh, whoever had owned it had previously used it also as a little needle book. Look at the dates here. How awesome is that? And just for size, I put it next to those buttons. That's how small this little pocket calendar air is. And here's another one that is also promotional and it's from a medicine company. Uh, the pages are blank and I think it's awesome and it has a calendar. All right, this next one is from 1922. I love the 1920s, especially when it comes to fashion. And so I saw this and I wanted to have it. This is a calendar that we're looking at in 2023. Can you believe it, guys? This was over 100 years ago. And here the person used it as a little log for some of their purchases. And then on the back side, we see a calendar for 1923. On the left side, you'll see some of the postage rates. Look at those rates. Oh my gosh. And also they had limited um, list of countries where they could mail to. So that's at the very bottom here. All right, guys, you got to see a great variety of examples of vintage ephemera. But let me list just a few more that you can definitely look out for in your area. We have the newspapers. You can find newspaper clippings, periodicals. Wallpapers are also wonderful uh, paper ephemera that you can use in your junk journals. Now let's also talk about where we can get them. And the first place is your home. You probably have it in your family's attic, attic's home. So make sure to check in with family and see if they have old photographs old greeting cards and then the next place is your local library make sure to check out the front of your local library ask your librarian if they have any that they are giving for free also look out for library sales where you can get wonderful books and magazines for such a great price and then we also have our marketplaces that you can find on facebook etsy ebay and Craigslist, uh, occasionally, I think you can find some there. So just check that out. And then uh, occasionally you'll also see people posting them here on YouTube where they have a channel and they'll create bundles and sell them. So also look out for that. Now we're gonna go back to um, talking about how you can use this vintage ephemera in your own personal journals. So earlier I'd shown you some photographs and I had found a beautiful picture of my late grandmother Elena here with her sister and I wanted to make a little tribute journal. This is holding some of the most precious letters she wrote to me as a child. This is our correspondence and so you can do something like this where you can put pictures. This is an album that I thrifted 
And what I did was I combined some of the pages will have her cards and then the others I will put some of our pictures. So I'm just showing you a little snippet here. If you want to see a full flip through of this, I'll have a link or you can look at my project share playlist. So here are some uh, postcards that I scanned that I have in my collection and I printed it out on on paper and just used it as a background in here. So there are many ways um, to use your letters. You can use the envelopes as a point of interest and reuse it as a pocket as well in your journal. Now I want to show you this gorgeous journal that I had purchased from a talented journal maker here. Her name's Donna Morgan um, and I'll link her channel down below but look at this gorgeous journal. Remember those antique um, photographs that my friend Dale, who was another talented journal maker. Well, here's an example of how you can use them. You can use it as an image on your junk journal and then apply all the different elements that you would like, uh, starting off with some vintage lace and buttons. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And then we have here, which is a page that she got from a piano book. And you can see that she's used it as a page and it's gorgeous. Again, layering here with some paper. We have some buttons. Here is some wallpaper and wallpaper. Some of them are textured. So here's an example of a textured wallpaper that they can put like, you know, like molding on the back, uh, on, the, on the wall. And I think it creates great interest on your page. So here's a textured one. And what she's done is created a pocket. And so you have a little tuck spot. Now this is also a, a vintage envelope that you can use. So this is a great way to just add it there. It makes the piece really interactive as well. Also wanted to point out if you have some ledger pages, here's one that she included. And I think that is so awesome. You can see you can do collaging. And there are some ledger pages that have space and you can definitely write on it. This particular one says it was from 1944. Now I'm gonna show you um, something that Donna had also made and I thought was wonderful. She had used this piece, which is a piano roll, our music roll here. And what she's done is she ran it through her embossing machine and created some texture on this page. And then you can see that this can potentially become a journaling spot. I can definitely add some paper where I've written something and then I can fold it away and put it in one of the pockets in my journal. So those were just a few ideas on how to use your vintage paper ephemera. Next time I'm gonna be doing a flip through of a junk journal that I made using only this paper ephemera that we have here. No digitals, no modern uh, scrapbooking paper. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. Real quickly, I did mention that some of these paper ephemeras are considered collectibles. And what they are, some of them are autographed photographs from iconic figures. It might be a playbill at a really popular Broadway play, or it could be a historical event. It can also be a um, limited edition periodical or magazine. So those are just some examples of some collectible ephemera. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is part of my Paper Confessions junk journal series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next time we'll be doing a flip through of that junk journal made with all this fun vintage paper ephemera. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again next time.